What is up? I am your chronically Caucasian vocal analyst. We're here to talk about Mariah Carey. Let's do it. There's a lot of, like, she is so good when it comes to onsets. Uh, onsets are the start of a note. Listen to how she is breathy. Right, she has a lot of air leak coming through. It's an aesthetic, right? It's legitimate. And then she does an aspirate uh, abrupt, like a couple of graduals, and then just kind of goes in on it. See that that kind of almost that yodel, that that sound, that click. That's when the folds come together. And then, beautifully phrased, right? When you generally, when you arrive at the last note of a phrase, uh, with very few exceptions, that note is like, you gotta be gentle with that note. It doesn't get as much attention. It's your, it's your home, it's your landing page, right? So you don't want to go hard on that. So she goes for this much richer, low, full voice, and boom, once she gets on that last note, it's breathy again, it's wonderfully phrased. Yes, that looks great. Um, so she went from, right? She went from like showing up Neo, right? She went from this black, like I'm in the matrix, but earlier than you. Cause you know, like, let's be real. Mariah Carey is the one. Uh, so Mariah Carey is Neo, right? And then... She got a costume change, right? There we go. And that's where we were. So respect, respect to the performer in her, you know, let's go. She, the way she uses her, her nodule situation is just so interesting. It's, it's like, you know, you'd think it's a death sentence given what people talk about, about vocal damage and nodules, but like there's some things that she is doing that you'd be actually very hard pressed to do without nodules. So that little like, we so, right? Like it's just the tiniest bit of air leak coming through that. Um, and it's like, it's a quality, right? It's, but she can't, she has access to that breathy quality a lot more easily. All she has to do is really, really gently put her folds together and the polyp or the nodules, which are little calluses, right? It'll be, it'll be, this is what's happening, right? The calluses will, will meet first and then the rest of the folds connect. But if you're gentle, the nodules will be the only things touching. And so you can play with that. Um, I don't advise going to get vocal damage, but you know. Ah. <sighs> Using vowels is a wonderful thing that everyone should do. Um, Eminem talked about this when, like, was it? There was like, there's no rhyming with orange or something like that, and he was like, just change the way that you say orange. <laughs> so right, fantasy, right? It's a little sassy. It's a little clever, right? So you can change vowels, and it can be a wonderful effect. This is a lot harder than than. Uh, you'd Im imagine at first glance. So when we ascend, there's like three ways to do it. Minus whistle register. <laughs> so there's three ways that you can belt, you can use your uh, thyroid cartilage, uh, like the more classical saying, like, ah, right? That's the thyroid cartilage. Or you can like let your larynx go up a little bit and be very, very, very gentle. And then the folds just kind of barely meet. And to do this is actually quite tricky. Um, if you do it poorly, you'll sound like a beginner, ah, right? But if you do it very relaxed, your posture is great. Your breath is gentle. You can do this. And what's interesting with Mariah is again, with because of those nodules, she'll actually get a, a more full sound by being with this neutral larynx thing, where she just kind of like raises the larynx and lets sound come out, she's getting a more full sound because the fact that there's air leaking 
means that she can use more air, right? Because if you if your folds are closed and really, really thin and that, uh, right? You can blow them open with too much air. But to have air leaking is a bit of an escape valve for her. So it's a very difficult thing to do anyway. But then she can get a quality that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Oh, come on. Yes. So a little bit of false full distortion there. And she kind of gently goes into it, which is smart, right? This is an hour and a half long concert. And she's the main attraction. Like opera singers don't sing for an hour and a half straight. Like that's just ridiculous. This is a Herculean ask. So she's going to do things that are smart to save herself, like from making mistakes that will uh, take away for her, from her longevity. So she slides into this. Eh, right? Slides into it very gently. And then she kind of gently comes off of it and then finds this really, really nice vowel and the right amount of air for this belt. And then immediately she's, uh, this, so this phrase is an AB phrase, a call and response phrase. There are different phrases if you want to get like super nerdy and technical, but let's just call this call and response, right? So the call is epic. Right? There's some vocal, there's some false full distortion, there's some belting, and then the response is dramatic, right? Contrast is always a really dramatic choice. It's fantastic. So let's uh let's listen to that again. Isn't that beautiful? You know what I'm saying? And this is so this is a good idea to do in general. So there's a theme to her phrasing. She's not necessarily doing the same thing exactly over and over again, but this is a theme. So when you have a theme, when you have an idea, if you keep switching ideas around, it can come across as actually a little manic uh, and, and weird. Like, it's like, what are you doing, right? Uh, so she's doing this call and response thing where it's a little bit more dramatic on the, on the A phrase and then on, on the call and the response is breathy, but she's doing different things within that idea. And it's just brilliant. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, yeah. And it's funny because I was, I was just thinking to myself, this tune offers a lot of rest for Mariah, which is like, again, this is an hour and a half performance, but knowing Mariah and not knowing this tune, I'm going to say that, and then she's going to hit some ridiculous gargantuan note, and I'm going to be like, well, there goes that theory, so let's see if, if that's going to be what happens. That's a beautiful belt. So, um, back to this this idea, this, this thing where... Um, it would be very difficult for other people to do it. Um, if you're breathy, you'll dry out the mucosal lining around your vocal folds. And there's a consequence to that. It will rob you of endurance. You'll maybe start coughing. Like, you don't want dry folds. Um, and so she has to be careful because there's a lot of air leaking that she can do. Um, but she's very good about using it judiciously, right? Very carefully. So that, you see how it's very gentle, but there's not a lot of air leaking. How can you tell? Listen for that hiss that happens when air leaks. And you see how as she goes up there, there's a lot more of that hiss. So she's, she's carefully navigating how much breathiness she wants to use, uh, which is very smart because, again, we have an hour left and Mariah is the show, which is crazy. So... Good for her for being a superhuman. I miss 90s choreo. That was gorgeous. That's beautiful right here. And again, this is hard. Um, because listen to listen to the quality. There's no vibrato in this at first. So it's like this quasi-mixed sort of falsetto thing 
happening after a belt. And I have no doubt in my mind that Mariah can hit this high note. P I say falsetto and people start having a conniption. Like, oh, 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 oh. It's like uh, one of the professors of Ethel, uh, Professor of Ethel, Estel, the method I, I study, not certified in. They have to put that huge asterisk in. Going for the certification, but I'm not there yet. One of the heads, uh, top professor of Estel, uh, says that falsetto is the F word. Because <laughs> we can never agree. Um, it's the, it's, it's, you say falsetto and people start, like, there's a bloodbath, right? People go into, like, you know, the Thunderdome and they start, like, spilling guts. Like, it's not a gentle thing. So I'm opening a can of worms here and I know that. Uh, the... But what, what I mean by falsetto, because let's qualify that statement for a second. When I say falsetto, when I say it personally, right, we can all have a different definition, but what I'm defining as falsetto for now is completely flipping the vocal fold. Zero connection. If a millimeter or less than a millimeter is touching, for me, it's not falsetto. That's mix, right? So it's a very, very, very uh, uh, draconian uh, definition of it. But the reason why I discuss that and make that a point to, to be specific about that, because then we can also talk more about what happens when she's up here. That. That's, that's a mix. You can hear there's a little bit of air leaking, but not a, a, like a super large amount. Um, because, you know, some, some, there's not complete closure of the folds, right? There's a little bit of separation. And what I love about great singers is they don't care what, what, how you feel about mix or falsetto. They're going to do what they want to do for the phrase, right? She's an artist. She wants, to sound, she wants it to sound a certain way. And that's how she's going to do it. And she doesn't care what you call it. So that's why I like to kind of talk about mix and qualify the statement. Because if we just say, oh, that's falsetto, we don't get the full explanation, right? There's some vocal fold closure, which gives it the little bit of, of power, uh, which you wouldn't get from folds like flipping wide open. And then she throws in just a tiny bit of vibrato at the end, which is gorgeous. Um, and what that does, what that accomplishes too, by adding that little bit of vibrato is that there's more vocal closure. Because when your thyroid cartilage tilts, the, uh, the vocal folds elongate, right? So that elongation means it's like pulling a rubber band, they come closer together. And it also creates a, a richness of the tone. So listen to that. Let's listen to that one more time. That's so brilliant. So that wonderful, that wonderful descent. I love that. It's so gorgeous. I love this. This smooth descent. Now she's going to do an aspirate abrupt, which means, ha, right? She's not going to do it like I did it because I got that opera in me. No matter what I do, I try to sing like Row Your Boat and I'm just like, oh, and lay down the stream, right? But she's going to do an aspirate abrupt. She's going to put that air through and it's going to, the folds are going to come in real quick. And it's in sharp contrast to what she just did. And again, contrast is dramatic. It's a really, really dramatic choice. And I love this too. She goes away from the belt. She hits the note and then goes away from it. And again, we need to consider how important the longevity is here. You know? So she, she, you know, goes to it and kind of slides all the way down. So it's, it's very important that we're not purists, that we are flexible, and we, we look at things more in terms of cause and effect as opposed to right and wrong, because that allows us to be adaptive, both musically and technically. So that can really help out in, in the execution of artistry as well as the artistry itself. Um, so, yeah, anyway. I love that, like, 
so there's so many people who like like Whitney Houston, who they she just like boom, she's just anchored and powerful and singing, right? And Mariah's approach to to singing is like I get you know it's highly dependent on the song, obviously, but it's nice and refreshing to see that she's completely unwilling to to have um, fun. Uh, but you know, if your hips are as tight as mine, caution. Right, you might hurt yourself or someone around you when doing even such a simple move. So, <sighs> that's so pretty and like epic at the same time. That flipping, like so many people are afraid of that. Right, that flipping sound where you're going from ah, right. I, I've trained it out of my voice. A lot of people are scared of it because it reminds us of cracking. We don't like that. And specifically, I'm going to show you a, an example because it's funny. So this is this is what we're all afraid of. Let's just get right, at, right to it. Right? We're all afraid of that. We're all afraid of that. She's not. Uh, and again, this, this cause and effect way, this cause and effect approach uh, has so many advantages. Ooh! Ooh! Is it the highest belt she's ever hit? No. But a high E is not a joke. Let's not pretend that that's easy. And it's sound, more important than anything else. It sounds good. I don't care how hard the note is if it sounds like a Tarzan impression. Right? You go to the singing Reddit and it's like, ah! See? I hit high C. I'm so good. Let me post it on my range. Let me give myself a medal. I'll print out a certificate. It's got to sound good, and that sounds amazing. Man, that was a bop. That was Dope Arenos. Can I say that, Dope Arenos? I think I can. <laughs> 